Hello, hello. This is another episode of todebate.net with my co-host who's grinning in front of me, who's energized because we've already just recorded another one and he feels like so much power in him. This is the incredible, the fantastic, the, the what should I add? The German that <laughs> <laughs> defines everything. That is just a summary of everything. The incredible Dirk. How are you? Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> you have the force of the Iron Man behind you. I don't know. You're such a fan of Star Wars and you have Iron Man behind you. Are you more of a fan of, of Iron Man or I guess, of Star Wars? I guess I'm more a fan of nerd culture than about Star Wars okay. or Iron Man or whatnot. Okay. So I like the, the whole space of fiction. Okay. And yeah. I have the power of RDD2 oh. with me. <laughs> All right. Today we're going to talk about power. The power of evil. Uh, the, sorry, I made a mistake on that. The debate today is about the US. So the US ceased to lead the world, the free world. Other nations are more important now. This is the motion we are going to debate today. I am going to be in favor of that motion, i.e. confirming that the US ceased to lead the free world. Whereas you, Dirk, you'll be against that motion and you'll go second. Is that what you prepared for today's recording? That is luckily what I prepared for today's recording, yes. Is it also <laughs> what you prepared for today's recording? I, I have prepared, yes, my side of the of the motion. It helps a lot. Otherwise, I should, uh, would go first and you prepare while I go first. But since you're already prepared and go first anyway, shall we do this? Let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. Make America great again. I think you've heard that many, many, many times over the past year. Now, this comes down to admitting that America is not great anymore, doesn't it? In fact, the US is undoubtedly still a superpower. Yes, still. But it's simply not leading anymore. In fact, I would even argue there's no single leader and it's up for grabs. It could be the EU, it could be China, it could be Russia. In fact, if we look at each of these uh, regions, we could argue that Europe is gradually taking maybe a, a stronger foothold in the NATO alliance since the US has, or Trump has it, uh, specifically requested for Europe to step up its engagement. China is clearly leading increasingly in Southeast Asia and East Asia, and the US is nowhere to be found except in South Korea. And even though North Korea keeps on uh, provoking everyone, the US just stands still. And Russia is clearly the winner in the Middle East. Uh, they've announced that they've won the war in Syria. And the U.S. you know, has participated. But honestly, we don't feel the presence of the U.S. They still have not resolved the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, even though boasting every now and then about, yes, this is the final time we're going to get everyone around the table and we'll get the peace process in place. If anything, the U.S. is going counter to the rest of the free world. Jerusalem recognized as the capital of Israel. Like everyone says, no, don't do that. The Trump still goes ahead. And as you noticed, I've corrected myself by saying Trump and not the US a few times. So I think maybe the US will regain that status after Trump. With Trump, no way. The US is not leading the world. It's really going, going, going against the tide, against the, the agreements with Iran, against the uh, Paris Accords on global warming, against all the free trade agreements. So clearly, it's going backwards. With Trump, it's not going to be leading. And it has very clearly taken a standstill, if not going backwards. And Trump himself doesn't even care about the G20. You've probably seen that picture with, where Trump at the G20 a few months ago was completely isolated and couldn't just wait to just get out of that meeting. So I'm sorry. The US has ceased to lead the world, uh, at least since Trump was elected. In my three minutes, I'll argue that it's been even for the past 20 years. Now... It's Dirk's turn. Against the motion. Make America great again. That was your intro. Well, yes, we heard that a lot. By the way, the very first time we heard that, 1980, coming out of the mouth of Reagan. Granted, he had not those funny red hats, but everything else was basically the same theme. And at Reagan, and arguably at least 20 years after that, America was at, it, at the height of his power and influence. 
So the argument just is not really completely true. The statement that, uh, that you make is not directly related to how great you really are. Second thing, you mentioned China, you mentioned Russia. What are indicators of greatness and being the leader of the world and of the free world? I would argue your ability to set policy. That is governed by your economic power and that is governed by your military power. And no matter what, uh, what, what president is in power and no matter what we think of it, America still dwarfs every other nation in terms of economic power. Yes, China has still way to go before they come even close. Yes, the same is true for Russia. And America spends more money on military than the next eight countries combined. So they are not to be dismissed. And even if Trump may be seen as an idiot, if he says something, he sets the agenda for the entire world. Next up, Sebastian. Let's hear his rebuttal. It's funny you actually mentioned both economic and military power. I was about to get to that very point. And in fact, I, again, disagree uh, with you. And I'll give a few examples um, on that aspect. If anything, the U.S. share of economic power has just anything but declined as opposed to the rest of the world. So little by little, the U.S. is losing its economic clout. In fact, China, as everyone knows, and it's increasingly the case with big companies like Alibaba, is ruling the world. It's shipping products everywhere, in fact, for free. You can now go, and I'm not going to mention the websites, I'm not doing free promotion for these websites, but you can basically buy products in China and, and get them delivered for free to your door. It's insane. It's crazy. So China, I don't know how they do this, whether it's subsidizing or whatever, but the US is unable to do anything, anything whatsoever. And that's the case also from a military standpoint. China is occupying illegally islands on newly created um, islands off its coast, uh, which, according to the international regulation, does not is not the property of China. Is the international community supposedly led by the U.S. doing anything? No, nothing is happening. North Korea is another problem that the U.S. pretends to be tackling and pretends to influence China, China is the one which is going to influence things in one way or another. If the U.S. attacks North Korea without China's approval, well, you can bet there's going to be a very, very strong reaction by China. Whereas if China attacks North Korea or invades North Korea, I can bet you the U.S. is not going to do anything. It's not going to lift a finger. Of course, they're going to be very anxious about having China at the, at the border of South Korea, but it's probably the lesser evil. Also, in addition, if you look at all the military expenditure that you mentioned, it's not because you spend a lot that you spend it wisely. I and mean, let's look at Afghanistan. Let's look, let's look at Iraq. I mean, these are complete disasters, complete disasters. Like, oh, we found weapons of mass destruction here in Iraq. Oh, let's go and kill Saddam Hussein. And in the end, what did they find? Nothing. And the country is a disaster. And it's been years and years of, of war. So no, it's not a good excuse to be saying, oh, I'm spending a lot of money. So I have power. And I was also stating that the demise of the U.S. started maybe roughly 20 years ago, and that's exactly what I was referring to, to these various Iraq wars and the gradual shift of power when Putin took over in the year 2000. Putin took over 17 years ago. He's just going to run for the next election in April or March 2018 for another four or five years, and then and so on and so on. And China is, as we know, just this monolithic block that is going going to carry on. So if anything, China, Russia, the EU are taking over an increasing share of the world and nobody's looking at the US at all for direction. Uh, as I mentioned before, Trump is taking all the wrong decisions, going out, like pretending there's no global warming created by human activity, recognizing Jerusalem as the capital city of Israel, which nobody wants to do because it's obvious it's going to trigger uh, additional conflict in that region. So no, the US is not leading the world. It's just like going backwards. It's incredible. It's like so starkly, starkingly obvious that it's it's sad to see. Dirk, let's hear his argument. China, producing goods, shipping them around the world. Yes, they make business with that. Yes, they make more and more business of that. Let me throw a number at you. The GDP per capita is about... 8,000 something in China, 8,000 something more in Russia, and $50,466 in the US. Why is that? 
because there's one thing how much you ship and do and work and uh, produce. And there's another thing. And by the way, even on that measure, China is smaller. And there's another thing, how much you distribute wealth and how much spending power you exercise and how much um, you you make sure that it's not just easily uh, easily taken away. What will be the future source of wealth? Data, control over data, privacy, all these things. What is the one state in this planet who can credibly claim to be able to surveil everything that happens on this planet or close to everything and has the largest data center of this world, has most of the computing power, basically it dwarfs all other nations uh, so far in terms of computing power and in terms of ability to exercise on that, has most of the brain power right now still. Uh, I, I agree that this may change in the future, but so far, most of the innovations come out of the States. All of these indicators are sources of power and leadership for the US. Now, second argument you made, military spending, and you compared and contrasted it with the US taking action or not. I might argue that uh, just because you have nukes doesn't mean that it's smart to, to shoot them at somebody. It's maybe smarter to, to threaten with it or be present somewhere or get other parties to act. Or yes, maybe, maybe it's actually smarter to wait until China moves into North Korea instead of doing something themselves. So I'm not convinced by your argument that a perceived inaction is the same as being powerless. Uh, arguably, uh, countries like Afghanistan, without the US forces in Afghanistan, that would be a total and utter and uh, global disaster. The same true, by the way, in, in other places on this planet where the international forces are in there and the international forces, if you ask them, are actually carried by the Americans. So there's a lot of activity going on. And I would argue this is this is leadership because uh, people have to follow. When the states say this is a place where we uh, amass forces, we are following. Trump not caring about the G20 and doing things like deciding that to recognize Jerusalem, all these things. First off, you will see in the future, not now, if it's really a good or a smart or a right move. Just because everyone disagrees doesn't mean that this is really the wrong thing to do. Second... Uh, the fact that he can do it and does it and uh, people have to deal with it and cannot stop him from that alone is a sign of power and leadership as well. And people have to position themselves towards that. All the countries of the world have to position themselves to, towards the US. They can ignore other countries, but not the US. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. I love numbers too. The US share of GDP worldwide was about 33% 30 years ago. It's now about 20%. So it almost has lost, lost half of its share uh, in 30 years. And if you look at the world population, 95% of the world population is outside of the US. So it's it's a bit of a joke to think that the US is still leading the, the world. Uh, if anything, I'm, and I'm going to conclude by that, it is leading on, on one aspect. It's leading by stupidity still. Uh, let's look at the president. It's a possible sex offender, warmonger, Twitter addict at the helm of the supposedly <laughs> supposedly uh, leading state. Okay, I let, I let our listeners judge by themselves if this is uh, what the world is led by. Thank you. Dirk. Thank God. The U.S. is not only led by Trump. If she, uh, if the U.S. would be led by Trump, then the situations would look different. There is a whole governmental organization and not everyone is at the same level of stupidity, to use your word. So we are still led by the U.S. And thank God we are led by the U.S. and not by Russia or China. I much rather prefer having to engage in a conversation with Americans about my values than with others on this planet. And... Thankfully, that will remain for the decades to come. I don't see any world in which it declines so fast that they really seize that position in the next decades. I agree with you. The share of uh, countries like China uh, increases. That's not necessarily leadership because they are not there yet. And they will still take quite a while before they get there. So let's see what happens in the next decades to come. <laughs> All right, that's it. That was today's debate. 
Let us know what you think. Let us know if you agree or not. And if you are American, uh, or rather a citizen of the United States of America, uh, then try to think carefully if this is the case or not, that the US is still leading the world. Um, it's funny you mentioned China or Russia, but I also mentioned the EU. It suddenly disappeared from your language when you said, I don't want to be led by Russia or China. But what about the EU? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not led by the EU. No, neither are you. The, the philosophy of the EU is different. Our European values are not there, actually. Every nation state has a different picture in mind how things ought to be run. So that's, that's a challenge. But you're right. How about we are going to be the next world leaders? I, I appreciate that you did not try to say we Germans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that no. Would, that would have sounded a little bit odd. Been there, done that, tried that. No, it didn't go well. <laughs> you know, wait another century. You know, but by, that, by that time, people will have forgotten. North Korea will have invaded South Korea. There'll be other bad guys. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, the question we are not actually debating here is also a relevant one. Why should it be good to be led by one nation? Why not having a balance where you have multiple, uh, like a like a, a orchestra of different opinions and they are all of them are just as powerful or not powerful that so they have to... Are you suggesting that it's better to follow than to lead? <laughs> yeah. I think we have another debate on that. <laughs> We cover everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> everything comes down. By the end of the of, of all these, of, we'll never get to the end, but we should probably write us some kind of like massive, <laughs> like syncretic, syncretic philosophy, which all ties together. You know. I yeah. Don't know. We should. Like, you know, one thing leads to another, so you can go to another page of the book and then go back to another theme and then come back to the. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and everything comes down to Star Wars anyway. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, that's not the one. Oh, come on. Oh, no. Yeah, I know that, uh, but I can. I don't know how to do R two D two. I don't know. Blip, blip, blip. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Uh, what the listener cannot tell from because they don't see you is uh, you just had a little R two D two keyring thingy, and uh, you told me earlier that you went watching the latest Star Wars movie. Something I haven't done yet. <laughs> So, interestingly, the one here who says Star Wars is overrated had nothing else to do but to run to the theater to see the movie. <laughs> and the day was released. <laughs> buy, buy a key ring. <laughs> no, I didn't buy it. It was given to me. Okay. All right. I got fans who give me key rings. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, so... Um, that's it. That was today's debate. Let us know what you think. Uh, as usual, we love to hear your arguments or um, what arguments won you over. Uh, go to the page vote to debate.eu or go to the debating motion and click on the thumbs up, thumbs down thingy to let us know. Or debate with us at Slack, at Facebook, at Instagram, Twitter, what have you. We love to hear from you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you, the... Thank you to you. Bye.